Good morning, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. I uh, thought I'd make a video since my wife went to church this morning. It is a Sunday morning. It is August the 9th, 2020. It's 10.06. And uh, I have a, some books that need to be taken down at the lower level because they're getting stacked up here. And I feel like talking about books since I am a book lover. Uh, I don't, I'm always getting the comment in my comments in my video. Do you read all the books that you show in your videos? No, I'm a book collector. I read all the time, but I love collecting books, and I am blessed with a house, a permanent dwelling in the in the midst of this howling wasteland that I can stack up down the lower level in every available space. And uh, I am blessed living in an area where you can go to thrift stores, Salvation Army, Goodwill, Humane Society, Bibles for Mexico. You know, there's, all, there's lots of thrift stores around where we live and there's used books, cheap, cheap books. And since I read from a wide wide area, uh, mostly non-fiction, um, that I can find something to read or something to add to our library. So with that, I'll stop the introduction. This morning in my diary for the, for the year 2020, I'm on page 755 on this uh, Sunday morning. Today is a hot day. We closed the house up last night and turned on the central air system. And so it is now 75 degrees inside my cell. So uh, what I've been reading, as I said, I've been reading the Samuel Johnson, a biography by Peter Martin. Now, one of the things that Samuel Johnson wrote was the life of Richard Savage, who was a poet and had a very tragic life. And so I've been reading along with that, this book uh, by Richard Holmes, Dr. Sa Johnson and Mr. Savage. And this goes into the, behind the life of Richard Savage. And he, he does like an analysis of Samuel Johnson's biography and the poet Richard Savage he goes into depth and so I've been reading it this uh, yesterday I read this yesterday and I'm still reading Paul Samuel Johnson a biography by Peter Martin so that's what I've been reading primarily now when I'm not reading you know I'm on the internet I watch YouTube videos and booktube videos and I, I write in my diary and I doze and I watch the birds and so um and I look at my books. Well, one of the things um, talking about books uh, well first of all I want to show some books that my wife got me. The other day, my wife, you know, she's out doing errands, and she always has to stop at a thrift store. And she then she calls me, and she says, do you have, she calls me on my little cell phone, and she starts looking through the used books on the shelves, and she starts saying, she knows what I like. So she was going through the books at a local thrift store called Ditto's, North Holland, that uh, raises money for Christian schools. And, she, and they had a bunch of new books on the shelves, and she started asking me, do you want this, do you want that? Well, one of the books, so I'm going to show those books that she brought home for me from Ditto's, <laughs> my wife. Well, my wife said, do you have Chronic City by Jonathan Latham? And I went to my library thing, so I, well, I have, uh, I have a hardback, but no book, no dust jacket. She says, well, they have... A copy with a dust jacket, dust jacket, 
uh, Chronic City by Jonathan Latham, and I said, get it. Now this cost two dollars. I had this copy, and now this copy I'll give away. So, as you all know, I'm to Jonathan Latham. So I got that. She bought home, and then she. Th there was also another Jonathan Latham book that I'll show. She said, "Do you have Jonathan Latham's book, Dissident Gardens? This one." And I said, yes, I have this. I, I just read this a couple of months ago. She said, well, they have a really nice hardback. So this is the hardback. And it's, almost, it's in pristine condition. It doesn't look like it's even been read. And it goes for tw almost $28. So I said, get me this, because I collect Jonathan Latham. So now I have the paperback, which I'll give away. So she got me a nice hardback edition. Perfect condition. $2. And then she said, do you have uh, Jonathan Cole's The Closed Circle? I said, yes, I have this in paperback. I collect Jonathan Cole. He's a British writer. She said, well, they have a really nice hardback edition for $2. This is the, I said, buy it. It's in pristine condition. It has deckel edge. <laughs> it goes for $25. Looks brand new. Not even been read. So now I will give this one away and keep this one. This is really nice, nice addition. So then my wife asked, do you have, she knows I collect the writings of the Canadian dramatist, essayist, novelist, Robertson Davies. And I said, I said, go ahead. And so she, she said, they have for your eyes alone, letters seven, 1976 to 1995. And I said, uh, I have a paperback. She said, well, they have a really nice hardback edition. So I said to her, pick it up. And it was $2. So now I'll give away the paperback edition. Now these I didn't have in our library. She said, she knows I collect memoirs and this is I think there's a trilogy of memoirs written by Charles de Gaulle, uh, the war memoir, the war mem memoirs of Charles de Gaulle, Unity, 1942 to 1944. I said, pick it up. This was a dollar. This one was a dollar. And then she mentioned this book, The Conquerors, Roosevelt, Truman, and the Destruction of Hitler's Germany, 1941 to 1945, by a Michael. Mackincloss. I have a couple of other nonfiction books by him, which I think uh, he did a book on Johnson's tapes, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson's tapes, uh, something like that. Maybe it's mentioned here. Let me see here. Anyway, I said pick it up. And this was $2, this one. So those are the books that my wife got me. My wife is always looking for books for me when she's out going to thrift stores. So that's uh, what my wife got me the other day at Ditto's thrift store. I did get a book in the mail a couple of days ago. I came across this on Amazon. It is a literary fiction called Hunters in the Dark by Lawrence Osborne. This thing got rave reviews and so I just thought I'd show it to you. Check it out on Amazon. And then I've been looking for, uh, I'm always looking for books down the lower level and I had come across, I was looking for a book, Why Read Moby Dick by Nathaniel Falbrick. I was looking for this and I'll explain why in a little bit. So as I was looking for this for a couple of days, I found a biography that I was looking for a couple of months ago on Sir Richard Burton. As you remember it a while back, it was last summer, I picked up at a Goodwill, a multi-volume edition of the Arabian Nights, which was translated out of, I think it was Arabic by Sir R Richard Burton. So I went through my library to look for 
I know I had a couple of biographies on Richard Burton. I found two of them, but I never found this one, and I found it yesterday. Uh, the Devil's Drives, The Life of Sir Richard Burton by Fran, Fran, Fran M. Bo Brody. So I found this one. And then as I was looking for this, I came across a biography. I, I, I collect biographies on George Eliot, who was Marine. Uh, her name, her original name was Marion Evans, but her... She goes under the name of George Eliot. This is a life by Rosemary Ashington. And I forgot, I have several biographies on George Eliot. And I collect her writings, especially Middle March is one of my favorite all time books. I collect multiple editions of Middle March. And I found this and then I said, well, I had another, I had a biography on her, her companion, a person that she lived with for a number of years and I couldn't find it, and then I found it. I found it yesterday, and this is the one I was been looking for. It took me two days to find this. <laughs> w. H. Lewes, A Life by Rosemary Ashington, who also wrote this. So now I have both of them, and I can put them all together in the George Eliot collection. Now I mentioned I, I spent a couple of days looking for this. Moby Dick, Why Read Moby Dick by Nathaniel, Felbrick. Well, I showed you I had found used this book by Nathan Nathaniel Fel Felbrick in the Heart of the Sea, the epic true story that inspired Moby Dick. So, and there's a person on Booktube named Ivan who's reading through Moby Dick through the month of August. And so I, I don't plan to read Moby Dick. I've tried multiple times reading Moby Dick by uh, Herman Melville, but I never succeeded. But I thought, I just got kind of crazy and I, I collect multiple editions of Moby Dick. And I just thought I'd show them to you in my, this video. So, I have this edition of Herman Melville's Moby Dick or the Well. And then I have, of course I have a biography on Melville, his world and work by Andrew Del Bronchi. Bronchi? Del Bronco, Brocky. But these are, and then I have another book by Fel, Nathaniel Felbrick, Revenge of the Well, the True Story of the Wellship Essex. So, so the, and then I, I showed you this one, Herman Melville, Moby Dick, or the Well, and then I have this edition of Moby Dick, by Herman Melville, this little one, this is a little, uh, I don't know what this edition is, it has a little, uh, a pocket books. And then of course, I, you see this one all the time in thrift stores, Moby Dick, a Penguin English Library Edition. Of course, then I have Crafts Notes on Mo, Mo, Melville's Moby Dick. Then I have this Penguin Classics edition, Herman Melville, Moby Dick, or The Well. And then I have a couple of Norton editions, Moby Dick, Herman Melville, Norton Critical Edition, edited by Harrison Hayford and Herschel Parker. This one came out in, oh, this is 19, 67, this one. And then I have this edition of Moby Dick, Herman Melville, Norton Critical Edition. This one came out, this is a little slim volume. This one came out in also 67. And then I have this other Moby Dick, second Norton Critical Edition. And then I have the Oxford World Classics, Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Then I have a big, huge hardback, Moby Dick or The Well by Herman Melville. This is a Norton, published by Norton. This is a nice edition, it has illustrations in it. Also, as you all know, that Herman Melville dedicated Moby Dick to his friend Nathaniel Hawthorne. It says here, 
in token of my admiration for his genius, this book is inscribed to Nathaniel Hawthorne. This is really a nice edition. It has illustrations in it. Uh, but it's a hardback edition of Moby Dick. And then I have this edition of Moby Dick, cl Graphic Classics. It's a little Graphic Classics. Also, the ha this book came out a couple of years ago. Melville in Love, The Secret Life of Herman Melville and the Muse of Moby Dick by Mich Michael Shelton. And then last, I have this one here, Moby Dick or the Whale. This is a 150th anniversary edition by Penguin. An Induction by Nathaniel Felbrick, author of The Heart of the Sea. This is a nice Deckle Edge. It's a really nice edition. So yeah, I collect books on Herman Melville, literary studies. I have his other novels, his short stories downstairs in the lower level. I just thought, just for kicks, I'd show you my Herman Melville collection. Why read Moby Dick by Nathaniel Philbert and Heart of the Sea by Nathaniel Hall. Then he wrote Revenge of the Whale. So I just thought I'd show these to you. So books, books, books. And uh, so yeah. So uh, that's about it here. Uh, like I said, I've been reading on Samuel Johnson. And writing in my diary. We're in the new week. I don't have anything planned this week, just to read and write. So I hope you had a good reading weekend, that you have a good new week. Uh, thank you for the comments and the subscribers. And uh, yeah, check out Ivan's, he's going through Moby Dick or The Whale. He's a booktuber, he's really... If I wasn't reading Samuel Johnson right now, I'm, really, I'm trying to stick with him. I would read Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I've tried to read it multiple times since I was in high school. I get halfway through of it and then I just I just lose interest or I just get distracted by something. Oh yeah I forgot the other day I mentioned that we were in, in Zealand after my doctor's uh, visit where I had my yearly physical. We stopped in Zealand which is north of Holland and visit thrift stores and we visit the Zealand Public Library and I found some used CDs I bought for 50 cents a piece I just thought I'd show them to you kind of I haven't mentioned music in a couple of videos but I got the Foo Fighters Sonic Highways used for 50 cents and then I bought Garbage Not Your Kind of People this is kind of like uh, rock I collect all these I collect I have other albums by the Foo Fighters. I have all the garbage CDs. And then I found uh, Grizzly Bear. I have, collect, I have several of their, of their CDs. And I found this used, Painted Ruins by Grizzly Bear. And then I found a, a, a Thai Seagal CD. It's kind of like psychedelic rock, punk, uh, noise, you know, shredding. This is it. I have this. Uh, this is this is to me was a real fine. I really like his music. Uh, Tal Seg Ty Segal. So. I just thought I'd show those to you. So uh, I'll sign off. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. And once again, I do pray that you're all doing well during this time of the plague, time of civil unrest, time of great upheaval in the world and the coming of the end of the American Empire or a dawn of a new age or the second coming of Christ who knows what's really important though is to keep seeking the Lord keep reading God's Word in the midst of these dark and troublesome times S 
stay in our knees and pray and cry out for God to have mercy on us all. Until next time, bye.